Hello, Beer Edits. Here I am at Sven Gatz. Much thanks for agreeing uh, for this interview. My pleasure. He is the Minister for Brussels Affairs here in Belgium. In uh, 1999 to 2011, he was a member of the Flemish Parliament. Uh, then he left to become director of the Union of Belgian Brewers. And in 2014, he returned to politics. That's right. Pleased to talk to you. Um, where are you? What have you been brewing uh, during the lockdown? <laughs> well, I didn't brew during lockdown because we, we ordered, we, we wanted to brew a beer for our uh, summer barbecue with our beer uh, club, beer uh, friends. But we weren't allowed by lockdown to, to brew at someone other's uh, microbrewery. So we had the beer uh, brewed and we should bottle it uh, in the next days. Uh, so it was not done by me or by my friends personally, but we kept on brewing. And what kind of beer is it? Well, it's not very complicated. It's, it's a summer barbecue beer, session beer. Well, maybe a little bit too much for session because it's six degrees alcohol. And it's sort of a um, variation on a, um, something between a, a special Belge and a saison. Let's keep it that way. Yeah. And which beer club do you belong to? Well, my father founded with some friends uh, in 1976 a, a beer club um, with friends of the, the Boy Scouts and, and, and other and, uh, of, the, of the parish they were attending to at the time. I was uh, 10 years old then. And, um, well, it still exists because the, 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 the story behind it is that at that time, in the mid-70s, uh, uh, women um, uh, got followed um, um, culinary uh, classes, uh, cooking classes. Uh, there, there was something was coming up and quite trending. And the men said, OK, what are we going to do? Uh, um, and they said, well, we, we might just as well create a, a beer a, a club. And after two years, the women did uh, no longer uh, attend the cooking classes. But now, uh, more than 40 years later, the beer club still exists. So it's a good thing. And in terms of uh, brewing, you've mm -hmm. been brewing since when? Uh, I took brewing classes, if I'm not mistaken, in 2009 uh, with some of the friends of the, the beer club. We did it in Anderlicht uh, uh, at uh, Kovi Seria with, uh, with Luc uh, and um, it lasted for three years. Eh? You have one uh, year full course eh? every Monday evening and then every Saturday, uh, one Saturday a month. And then the two following years, uh, one Saturday a month, uh, a brewing day. Eh? And so that was good to have the, the basis uh, and afterwards we uh, went brewing um, with some classmates, uh, it was uh, Mark Struy from uh, Brewery Den, Den Trist that you maybe uh, or, already visited. And now the last beer that we brewed just, just a few weeks ago was with uh, Raymond from Vier Payot. Uh, and so uh, we brew 100 liters, 200 liters, something like that. We're 12 members in our beer clubs and then we, we divide it. We, we drink half of it during a barbecue, something like that. And the rest, we divide the bottles uh, bet between amongst us, yeah. And uh, in terms of home brewing, where have you seen that grow in Belgium? I mean, the Home Brewers Association, yeah. the Belgian Home Brewers Association re recently won a concession from the Belgian government in terms of being allowed to sell up to 40 liters of beer at beer festivals. Yeah, 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 that's their right. Thing. Do you think that uh, reinforces the beer culture in Ab Belgium, because yeah. we know that UNESCO has declared it a cultural thing. Uh, yeah, 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 absolutely. Um, in fact, it was uh, special to see that the, the, the reinvention of Belgian beer culture, which lasted for all these decades and all these centuries, but the real uh, impulse uh, from, for, for, for sort of a rebirth came from the, the, the other part of the ocean with, uh, with, with Jimmy Carter's uh, liberation of uh, home brewing at, in the 70s. Eh? Maybe at the same moment that my father and his friends founded uh, this beer club, so, so maybe there is some, <laughs> some uh, relation between those two. And when the rest of the world uh, went to home brewing, uh, Belgium just followed a little bit later, in fact, because there was already a certain diversity of beers still in our beer culture. 
And we are uh, often uh, too modest people. We have to hear it from abroad that people, home brewers from abroad, came to Belgium in a sort of pilgrimage to say, oh, we want to know to learn your styles because we want to brew them at home. And then we said, oh, this, we must be as good as they say we are. And just after that, maybe 10 years after the real uh, start, or maybe 20 years after the real start in, in, in North America, uh, Belgian home brew brewing uh, restarted. And, but it's good because it gives an, a, a, a new impulse. I had lots, lots of discussion on this topic when I was director of the Belgian Brewers eh, because I came in with, with that background. I, I was aware of the force of the big breweries. Eh? Um, it's not a, not a, a secret that I, I did my uh, um, uh, high school years with uh, Michel Moortgat uh, during six years. But that's coincidence. Eh? We, we, we met when we were 12 and we were until our 18 at the same school. So I knew what the, what the brewery like Duvel Moortgat was and I knew the importance of, of yeah, of guys like A.B. Inbev, we can discuss all day about that. Eh? But I knew also the, the, the smaller ones. And when I came at the Brewer's House at the Grand Place, there was quite a discussion. But, and my, my, my background in politics helped me there, because it's always making compromises between different angles. And at first, some at the Brewer's House said, why are you concerned about all these smaller brewers? We don't really need them. We brew 95% of uh, the volume with the brewers here. And... These guys, 5%, why do we need them? I say, if you want me to lobby towards Belgian politics in, in a general way, on whatever topic, it's comfortable for me and it's more credible for us if we represent everyone, small, from the smallest one to the biggest one. Eh? And so I had to work on this, but I'm glad I, I succeeded because the um, introduction also, the possible introduction of smaller brewers at the Federation was, was, was made possible by... Um, a lot of talks, a lot of dialogues, and also of, of the change of the beer world internationally. The, and in the end, even the, the, the most uh, ferocious adversaries uh, understood that beer world had changed for the last 10 years profoundly. And so it's, it's a good thing. I, I like diversity. And, and as some uh, uh, clever brewers said at a very stormy uh, General Assembly when we talked about this uh, in the Brewer's House, some, some, it was like uh, Mr. Van Roy eh, from, um, or Mr. Toye uh, uh, from, from Palm, eh, who was former um, brewer uh, or owner at Palm. He said, guys, we have to realize one thing. We all started as small brewers once, or our ancestors did. And Frank Boone said, he's right. And then said, oh yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, that debate seems to be still continuing in my talks with the, uh, the Belgian brewers, uh, because when I bring up last year, uh, how are you supporting smaller brewers? Well, there's, they mentioned a few things, but really their presence on the Grand Place was minor yeah. compared, and the beers were it was going. This is nothing like the crafty feel I get yeah. at certain festivals. That's right, but that's not a big problem for me. I, 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 there are already more smaller breweries present at the Belgian Beer uh, Weekend. And in fact, if you want to uh, have a grasp of what Belgian beer culture is about, you have to visit two beer festivals. You have to go at Zitos and you have to go at Belgian Beer Weekends. It's the both sides of the same medal. And I know what you, what you mean. Eh? And so. Uh, when I was director of the Belgian Brewers, what we did was put the powers that be at Grand Place, and then I opened the second bar just behind that, the Beurs, La Bourse, where you had another kind of diversity. Um, I have talks with uh, Jean Humler also of the Moudre Lambic, who said we want to create an alternative beer festival. It's no problem, let's, let's try to interact. Uh, but. Uh, what smaller brewers may not uh, lose uh, fr from uh, fr from point of view is that the Belgian Brewers Federation, just like the, 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 the American uh, brewers associations, they are powerful lobby groups who want to represent the brewers' um, economical interests. And okay, that's about big brewers, but it's also about smaller brewers. But you can, it's hard to imagine a world where you would only have small brewers. You see, it's possible, but it was, it was like that um, 
100 years ago in Belgium too, but the quality of the beers was not as good as it is today. So I'm, you see, I'm, I'm a politician. Uh, I was before the brewers, I'm after the brewers, still a politician. I'm quite pragmatic on that. And um, you can have all so, sorts of views on, on, on beer and on quality and, 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 and things. I always try to, to overcome partially this, uh, this, this possible fracture with blind tastes. I say, if you, you, you don't like that beer because you know it's big, you know, let's do a blind taste, see what you think about. And may, maybe you will still not like it or you would like it and still, you will still not like it afterwards. But you have to admit it's a beer. And well, it's about, it's about dialogue mostly. And, and, uh, and I think that changed really uh, in, in, in a quite a big way the, at the Brewer's House the, the, the last years. Maybe it's still a big federation with big boys, eh? okay. but there is a lot of more space for the others too. Uh, and of course, you can have confederal models eh? if you want to have a, a craft brewers association in Belgium, which is also part of the Belgian Brewers uh, Association. All types of models are, are possible. Eh? For me, everything can be put on the table. Uh, but now I look from it, uh, to it from a distance, of course, and I, sometimes I smile. <laughs> and in terms of home brewing, the usual yeah. path is home brewer to, I guess, craft brewer, startup, and progressing slowly to make a mark. And some have, we've, many we've mm -hmm. talked to have gone through that stage. You know, we have Siphon, we have the uh, Brussels Beer Project, yep. and La Source, and of course uh, Cantillon, who we can consider as a micro craft brewer because he is really supporting a lot of the craft brewers. Is every home brewer want to go commercial, have a dream in their mind of craft? Have you, for example, ever felt that you want to sell or I, I, I think every home brewer at least once thought that this would be a nice thing to do. But of course, it's the difference between being able to brew a good beer, which is also a very good thing, and being able to, to sell it, to put it into a market, because lots of romantics in the beer world think that beer sells itself. This has never been the case, never in, in, in at one century. So you always have to, be, to have this uh, double uh, perspective, to be a good craftsman, of craftswoman, whatever, and a good uh, marketeer seller. And that makes the perfect brewer. And so some are better in this, some are better at that. And so, yes, I thought about it to at some stage maybe uh, do something with, with craft beer on a commercial basis. Maybe when I retire from politics, it's still some in, my, in the back of my head, but I, I don't know if I, if I actually will do it. And I think for the moment with the market being real full, and of course, because there are lots of, of smaller brewers now, Maybe a model here in, 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 in Europe, otherwise it's, it's different in North America maybe, is to, to uh, have uh, this uh, profession of, of, of brewer, of being crowd brewer on a, on a part-time basis. I think that's possible. But to go all the way and say, now I want to be self-sustainable on an economical basis in three to five years from here, that's hard. And that's, I, I admire the people who do that because that's really the guys who, and, and the girls who, uh, who do it. So for me, it's still in the back of my head. It's, it's some sort of a, um, a liberty that I give to myself that I could do it. If I want to do it, maybe I'll do it. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> and what would be the ultimate beer you have in these dreams? That oh, you that's difficult then because I like all sorts of beers. I'm going to be very honest with you. There are not much beers that I don't, don't like. So as a child from this Brussels region, of course, I come into Lambic and Goes, but I know to master that is a hard thing, and maybe I'm already too old for that, to, to, to really uh, be able to master a good Lambic. I know there are guys like uh, Pierre Tilquin who did it in just a few years. Incredible, eh? what a good quality, so it's, it's possible. But others did it in 10 years. Eh? And so maybe it would be more simple to um, to go into the stronger um, blonde ales, but then who knows what the market wants. You see already the shift from the, the stronger beers to the, the session beers. Uh, so I don't know. Uh, if I would uh, make the step uh, to, to, uh, to go to really to commercial brewing, craft brewing, I, would also, I should also take into account what, what people want at that moment. So difficult question. Um, 
There is, that, that, the, 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 there is no, not one type of beer that I particularly want to, to brew. Uh, yes, I like a Russian Imperial Stout in the winter, but maybe it's only a minority of, of people who want to go that far. Uh, yeah, but we are, we are really, uh, we are sort of a, we are a little bit freaks, so that's why you are interviewing me. <laughs> <laughs> and so it's good to be a freak because you, you, you can go far and you can go deep. At the same time, you always have to have a catch-all beer where people say, okay, I'm maybe not into dark Russian imperial stout. I want to, to drink a normal beer. And then you... you yeah, yeah. I'm glad you brought up the issue of uh, gender in beer. Uh, do you think there's up-and-coming women uh, beer makers coming through the home scene? We're, we've seen a few ourselves. Um, What's being done to encourage that? Do you, do you know? I don't know if you have to encourage us. You don't have to discourage us, of course. But it's good that, um, well, there were all, 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 always some women brewing. But for the last 10, 15 years, there are more women brewing. But it's still a minority. So when I say I don't know if you have to encourage us, encourage it, I, I mean, I don't know if, if you do have to do something special to do it. I would like to see more women brewing, but okay, if they want to brew, they brew. If they don't want to brew, they don't. Um, but I think it's, it's going uh, the good way. And I see more women also than, than um, 10, 15 years from here who are uh, liking beer, drinking beer, because brewing is one thing. We also have to make it a drink. But you have some archetypes. Sometimes beer uh, is really uh, attached to, to males with a little beard also and a mustache and a little belly. Uh, the, the, the bon vivant, uh, the, the, the people who live the good life. And I, I did also, when I was with the Belgian brewers, with, with some brewers actually, because I didn't do things on my own there, to say, hey guys, we have to, to go on Belgian beer weekend with smaller glasses, a little bit more refinement, because I like to drink big chalice. <laughs> That's really what I like to do. But maybe some people don't, and maybe some, some women in particular. So let's make smaller glasses. You can taste more. Uh, let's make the put the big bottles at the second uh, venue behind the, the, the Beurs, La Bourse, uh, to say, okay, you can also uh, savor, savor it. Uh, um, and and we, we, had, we had a good uh, road behind us. So these are things that brewers can do to, to make it a little bit more uh, refined uh, and to say, like, like colleagues of mine, Nessof van Rafelgem, who I know very well, they open also the, the world of beer to, to a lot of women. Eh? Because for me it's always nice, whether it be a man or a woman, but, a woman, but uh, often it's our women, uh, that say, I don't like beer. I say, it's not possible. There is a taste that you will like. Tell me what you like. And then you, you uh, discover that people don't know what they like. They cannot make the distinction between sugary or uh, sour beer. And, and it, it starts with basic. If you say, if you like this, I will give you. And then most of the time you say, well, that's, that's, that's not bad. I didn't know that a beer like this existed. And so I like to convert people. <laughs> as long as the law, the law uh, allows me. <laughs> <laughs> or the law. And uh, in terms of uh, where you see the home brewing market going and uh, going into, you know, do you think Brussels has reached its limit in terms of new craft brewers or do you think there's still a lot of room to grow? Because mm, well, we see the market growing, we see in fact, the bigger brewers learning from the smaller brewers. We look at. Yeah. We just interviewed uh, a few months ago uh, a guy here who was a tri running a trial line. And he couldn't find a zero percent beer he liked, so he brewed his own and is now selling it. Yeah, yeah. And they're learning that you know people didn't like zero percent before because you were just changing one of no. your dissipate lagers and putting zero percent. Uh. Whereas the craft. Did. Well, let's say. I think the answer is quite simple. A good friend of mine, uh, Urbain Couteau and, and Carlo Grothart uh, from uh, Strasse Brouwers, uh, told me, I, I think a year ago, that the figures, the numbers that they had at that time, and, and probably you know them also, is that at that time there uh, was a new brewery in the world st still every day, but one uh, closing down every week. And so the gap is closing, the delta is closing. That's a normal uh, economical process. Eh? And so, yes, there is still room for new craft brewers in Brussels or around the world. 
but it's always and even more about uh, inventivity and to say what do people want to drink and why um, and there are different kinds of marketing and uh, there's not one way and so yes there is still room for um, smaller breweries i see every still every not every week or every day but every few months there is a new one opening up but then i think okay guys uh, my respect but uh, are you going to be able to sell the beer? We will see. And then there is at a certain point also a shakeout in the market. Eh? That's not something I'm fond about, uh, but it will, it will happen. But it will settle itself in a, in a normal way. Uh, it's like in every economical sector, uh, but still with a big diversity. So uh, it will sort itself out. Will COVID-19 sort it out in a way that was unexpected? Difficult to say because we're still really eh, within the, 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 the heart of the crisis in a, from a chrono chronolo chronological point of view. And so, of course, some uh, brewers, uh, the smaller ones, are, are more affected than, than the others. But everyone is affected, so it's difficult for me to, to see now or to be able to predict when, how the markets will reopen. Eh? Uh, I was also behind the scenes busy with reopening Horeca, eh? so uh, I hope for Belgium now the the 8th of June will be a D-Day and it will not be in the, the best circumstances, but we have to reopen for those who want to reopen. And I hope that uh, the, this period of closure, of lockdown, was not too long for the small ones, for the big ones. But that is difficult to see. For the moment, I'm, I, I'm, I'm quite optimistic in the sense that I don't think that this, this two or three months are really enough to kill a small entrepreneur, uh, or a craft or a craft brewer. But of course, it's not, good, not a good time to, to open up and to, to, to launch another uh, new beer. Eh? I am aware of that. But I think we, we can overcome that because the thing that beer represents is still the, the, the being together and the quality of being together. It's something that I said uh, to a few journalists when I, I presented also an approach to reopen Horeca. I said, before we were always complaining about why is a beer or another beverage costing that much more um, in relationship or in comparison with what if you drink it at home. Well, now we know why, because we want to go out and share something, a beer in particular, uh, in, a, in a pub, in a, on a terrace. And, and that is the price, and that is a small price we pay for it, because it's the, we, the, the owner makes a living out of it. But that is what we pay, the, 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 the wish of being together. And so that is one thing, one good thing of COVID, that we maybe re-understood why Horeca is so important for, for us, because it's, it's about life, it's about sharing, it's not about the cost of the beverage only. I'm more worried about, I guess, the family brewers. You know, you had that distinction where mm -hmm. some of them were either going craft or trying to remain their own, they were already craft in a way. Uh, Will those make it through, do you think? I think that the, the, most of the family brewers are... The, luckily for them, they had good ten, year, 10 years behind them with really thriving business, uh, certainly on export. Now, I don't know if this export is going to last. The market was also already a bit slowing down, and now maybe with, with COVID, that will change also the business model. But I, what I want to say is they, they have a certain buffer. Yeah, they can take some hits, not too much, but they can take this hit, I'm quite... Uh, I hope they don't, uh, I don't disappoint them by saying this, but they, they are quite all right, the, the family brewers. That uh, uh, intermediate park, betwe park between the very big ones and the craft ones, they can, I think that they, they will, will, will last. And, you know, in, in their uh, existence for different generations, they have, had, they have met other uh, difficulties. So no, I think they, they can take it, and I wish them all, uh, all of good luck. Yeah. That's reassuring. Mm. I guess uh, we're coming close to three months and soon, and I guess a lot of the home brewers, back to home brewing, <laughs> their beer will start to... Are you looking forward to trying some of the beers, your friends and other, the home Yes, brewers? certainly, certainly. Uh, we want to be able to taste again, to see people again. Last weekend, I visited um, a small uh, brewery in, in Jettene, uh, Brasserie van de Kelder. Okay, they're Brussels-based brew in Ghent, eh, but some of them uh, start that way. And they were uh, one of the guys who made the batch before Corona and they want to launch it and then everything was shut down. So last weekend I visited them because I live in the same uh, municipality and, and I went to uh, buy a, 
their saison and their IPA. So, uh, and I, I uh, tasted it in my contact bubble with my sons last Sunday, and we said, okay, nice. So, yeah. Do you think there will be a lot of beer thrown out in Belgium? But France is already throwing out hundreds of thousands of liters. Yeah, th th I don't know. I, I, I guess it will be the case. And, and I I'll, I'll already saw some commercial, commercial uh, gestures of big brewers who said we are taking back the beer, and, and I, I'm afraid that the, the, it will happen. Um, of course, one good thing I learned when I was in a home brewing class in Anderlecht is uh, you can distill uh, these, these old beers to, um, to liquors if you want to. Eh? So uh, you can always uh, reuse. It would be, it would be uh, uh, not a good thing to, to throw it down the, down the drain. But I don't know the stocks of the, the brewers. I suppose, yeah, we will lose some beer. But may this be a, a, an appeal to say, OK, maybe we can <laughs> reuse the beer for something else. So we might see some new types of liquors coming out. Yeah. I mean, we had visited uh, Dr. Van der Kroner, and he's made a beer port mm. even before. The ah, okay. Yeah. She says it's not beer, but yeah. it's a beer port, a mixture yeah. of beer and port. Why not? Huh? Because in, in that, I'm, I'm very liberal also in that po from that point of view. Uh, when I was working for the brewers, it was the, the, the share of throat. Huh? So you, you drink or wine or a beer or uh, what they said, hard liquors. Well, fortunate for me, I like all three of them, eh? but in, in proportions that I choose myself. So maybe we can be, uh, we can do some interesting things with them. It's up to the brewers. Some, some will certainly do that, and uh, we'll see what happens. It's better than to, 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 uh, to, do, to throw it around the, around the drain. Eh? But OK, I don't know the, the number of stocks that are still uh, there, out there. Lastly, I was wondering, are you encouraged by some of the community spirits by some of the brewers, uh, especially the craft brewers in Brussels area? Some are like La Source and Stormerlings and all that are getting together. Some are supporting community projects. Some are supporting themselves, yeah. opening up online stores. I guess that's an encouragement of the inventiveness. Yeah, of course. And that's uh, the, the, the inventiveness of, of, of being an entrepreneur also. Eh? And there are different types, uh, of different forms of being an entrepreneur. No, I, I followed in the local press what some did and how they, uh, they kept on doing business. So it's, it's very good, I, I think. It, uh, if it does, if it, for a, a sort, uh, an, an, a sort uh, number of months or weeks, it's not maybe the best uh, way to do business. It's also a good way to keep in contact with not only your clients but also your your, your citizens, eh? and so it it can create new bonds. Um, so it's interesting to see that uh, they didn't. Uh, uh, fall back and, and waited until the, the crisis uh, went over, but they, they said, okay, what can we do now? And um, good, good work. We all have this phenomena where brewers look down on beer firms and beer firms say, no, we're starting up or what we call beer firms and some people call gypsy brewers or, or what mm. do you think about this being transparent with the consumer, mm. especially consumers who may not be as into the beer scene, let's say, nerds, as some people? Mm. Well, let's say it would certainly be better to, to have on, on the, la the labels the fact that the beer is brewed by, by the brewer itself or not. I think it, it's, it's good as an information for the customer. Of course, some brewers are in favor of that, others are not in favor of that because they brew also for other brewers and they, want, uh, uh, they don't want to have difficulties with their customers and the, the beer firms. But from a, from a consumer point of view, it would be better. But then again, I think that a, a large number of consumers don't really care eh? because we are really into this sensibility and sensitivity. And I think it's important to have to be transparent. But I think we, we, uh, we, we, we uh, overestimate the, the number of customers who, for, for who it's, this is crucial. I think many uh, beer drinkers just want to drink a good beer. And they're not really into the issue, well, is it brewed by a brew firm uh, or produced by a brew firm or brewed by a brewery? So we overestimate that, I think. But if it was up to me, it would be better to be transparent on that. It's just basic transparency. I guess some brewers, as a follow-up, uh, the Belgian mark is so well known that will some brewers, gypsy brewers from other countries, take advantage of that? I have known of some... Swedish brewers who have tried to cash in on the Belgian brand, should that be protected? And that could that be protected through the label? 
Yeah, I think everyone that wants to brew here, whether it be in a collaboration brew or a gypsy brewing um, approach, is, is welcome. But maybe it should be more transparent on the label. Yeah, there's nothing uh, wrong with the transparency on the label. And then the other thing is, what is in your glass and do you like it?